welcome back to the channel. You join me today in a slightly soggy field near Milton Keynes so I can tell you a bit of a story. Back in 2016, a group of Volkswagen executives accidentally took some acid with their Curryverse and they decided they were going to try and create a really hardcore hot hatch. And the result was this, the 2016 Volkswagen Golf GTI Club Sport S. They turned the GTI's power up from 230 to 310 horsepower, but that alone wouldn't have been enough to get the collective motoring journalists of the world frothing up the loins, but this thing did, and it's become a bit of a cult classic, and I'm going to try and tell you why and find out myself, because I've only just driven this from central Milton Keynes out to this, well, there's a campsite really. So anyway, let's get under the skin and find out what makes this car so special and why it's held its value so well. The GTI Club Sport S was and pretty much still is the most hardcore GTI ever made in terms of being focused for the track. So, I don't know actually, you think it'd look a bit more like a scary thing and less like a Golf that your mum would drive. You've got some extra black bits down here and a redesigned bumper. Oh, and the massive sticker down the side. But other than that, it looks a little bit oh, ordinary. And that's kind of deliberate because the GTI has always been an understated thing. And this was kind of a follow on to the Edition 40, which celebrated the Golf GTI's 40th birthday back in 2015, I think. I'm going to correct that. I know when I edit this. But yeah, from the front, looks a bit normal, doesn't it? Let's go around the back and find out because I think it's a little bit different around there. Hmm, it's kind of a bit normal around here as well, isn't it? I mean, obviously you've got this new Club Sporty rear spoiler, which apparently was developed in a wind tunnel and took ages to design, and it's got a little hole here, but it's not, I don't know, it's not that dramatic. It's a nice ducktail swoopiness here, which reminds me of an old air called 911, but yeah, it's all normal GTI really. Actually, these exhaust pipes here, they are up from 55mm on the standard Mark 7 Golf GTI to 65mm. That's a centimetre bigger each side. And we've got a rear diffuser thing again for better aerodynamics. I'm still not really getting it, Volkswagen. You told me this was mental. Should we look under the bonnet and see if there's craziness there? It's only when you pop the bonnet that you start to realise exactly when the drugs started to kick in. In that Wolfsburg boardroom, the standard GTI's 230 horsepower engine was boosted to 310 horsepower, which was the same as the four-wheel drive Golf R, except this only sent power to the front wheels through an electrically controlled limited slip differential. Now, if you think about it, that's kind of the same as the contemporary Civic Type R. You know, the mad FK2 one with the massive wing, which looked mental. Same amount of power, but in a smart suit. There are other changes as well. There's an uprated fuel pump. There's a lightweight and a smaller battery. There's actually, if I got on my knees, which I'm not going to because it's wet, and I'm wearing my very best jeans, there's a bespoke aluminium subframe over the front axle. There's also aluminium brake disc carriers and various other brake components, which are all made of lightweight aluminium. There was a lot of engineering and I've just spat on it. That's unfortunate. Sorry, Volkswagen. This is now only worth £31,000. Mm. So the mechanicals all sound quite different to standard GTI, quite special. But I think the real key to this car's specialness, I should stop saying special, is on the inside. Let's check that out. While the outside of the Golf GTI Club Sport S might look a bit vanilla, in here it's more like a 50 shades of grey chamber of deviancy. You get lovely wingback Recaro tartan cloth sport seats, which really do hug you in nicely in the corners, as they probably should. And the rear seats, well, they're not there. You can kind of imagine the sensible German conversation that was had at Wolfsburg when they mooted that. Heinz, kein Hintersitzplätze, bist du verrückt? you know, or something. As well as no rear seats, you don't get a parcel shelf or a boot floor. So the boot's actually a really big space. The most practical Golf GTI, perhaps. You don't get any sound insulation under the bonnet. There's less sound insulation in here. Um, you could just opt to have no floor mats to save that extra bit of weight, but they are in here, which is good because I've made a lot of mess with my muddy feet. But in short, it's a really sporty, lovely cabin. You've got an Alcantara steering wheel as well with the 12 o'clock red bit up here. Manual gearbox only because the automatic would have been too heavy and would have besmirched the lightweight ethos of the car or something. Yep, yeah, 
it's a reminder that the Golf 7 had a really quite tidy cabin. It was nice, and this was a pre-facelift car. So yeah, all good in here, but still relatively sensible, apart from <laughs> no rear seats. Where does the lunacy come in? I think it might be in the driving. Shall we find out? <laughs> so we're going to go for a quick drive in the Golf GTI Club Sport S to see if there's magic in the way it makes you feel when you drive it. I've been told there is. Let's discover it. Now, first thing to know, the two litre engine, it's got 310 horsepower, 380 newton meters of torque, but the mid range isn't as ridiculous as something like a modern Civic Type R. It's very linear the way it pulls. And when you get wheel spin, which I've been getting a lot of today because it's damp, you don't get that horrible banging noise from the front end. And actually, the suspension in this car is specifically designed to reduce horrible axle tram. And it works. Um, often in Volkswagen Group cars of this era, you would accelerate, spin the wheels up, and it would sound like a rhino is mating with your suspension turrets at the front of the car. But anyway, let's take it for a poodle and see what it feels like. I'm going to put the suspension into, well, it's called individual mode, but there's a Nürburgring tuning on it. And I use this little touch screen. It's about that big. What's that? 12 inches? <laughs> um, to change the settings. So I hit car, or I, or I hit the mode button down here. And I'm just going to put it into individual, which I've set up. Everything basically is racy trying to do this without crashing of course which is always important actually let's just put it in race mode optimum profile for dynamic driving right we're in a 60 limit let's put it in second gear Oops. okay i'm second gear at 30 wow okay i've learned something already it has a hard rev limit and the exhaust makes all manner of pops and cracks as you hit it or as you shift up at high RPM. Sounds like gunfire. I think in the press release they describe that as atmospheric backfire. It's not the Somme, lads, it's a bloody car. Anyway, I'm now stuck behind a Mercedes ML with a personalized number plate with the number 69 in it. I bet he's great fun on a nice twisty road and it's been ruined by someone doing 40. Right, let's go. <laughs> okay, the dynamic dampers are quite firm in race mode. <laughs> okay, so this suspension has been set up for the Nürburgring lap record when you've got it in race mode. And that doesn't mean it's ridiculously hard. It's designed to work with the curbs at the Nürburgring, so it's not brittle, it's it kind of feels fluid and oily. <laughs> you can really feel the diff working to haul you around those corners. That, wow, okay. I was expecting this to be a bit of a hooligan and loose, but it's not. It's really tied down and keyed into the road. What is perhaps most surprising is the throttle response. No one talks about the throttle response in this car, but they should. I'm, I'm heeling and towing in a Golf. Usually, the pedals and the delays and the accelerator, they just don't work for heel and towing, but in this, they are. <laughs> now, this car's on Pirelli P0s, and it's very damp. Not wet now, it was wet earlier, and they're finding pretty impressive grip. I think that electronic differential is really helping to hunt it out and drag me down the road. Oh, I want to go and find some more corners to throw this at. There's a speed camera. Hello, Mr. Speed Camera. A true velo. I've not heard that word for a while. The sun is out. Hooray. The sun shines on my two-door, two-seat Volkswagen hot hatch of joy. It is worth noting that you do get quite a lot of road noise at 70 miles an hour from the back because there's no passenger seats to absorb it. 
when you think of your passenger seats, that's normally like a big sound absorbing mattress. And this car doesn't have them. So yeah, it's not as refined as a normal Golf, but it's not dreadful by any means. And if you're driving to a track day 200 miles away, you won't have to wear earplugs. I've driven normal cars with back seats, which are noisier than this. So there we go. Right. Quite like the diddly old infotainment screen. It's not even the top spec one that was available in the Golf at the time, I don't think. I seem to remember there was a bigger version, but you're not buying this car for the infotainment screen, but it's good to know that in 2020 it still works, still looks good. Let's stop fiddling with my microphone. It does make quite a nice noise when you turn it on this car. When you start it up, it starts with a crackle. <laughs> the traction control is brilliant. <laughs> It chips away at the power really smoothly, so you're not feeling like you're fighting with it. Woohoohoo! Okay, yeah. Uh, the steering response is really, really good. It's not a really sharp turn in, but it, the weighting of the steering, it loads up as you want it to. And it's really accurate. I'm enjoying the Alcantara wheel. I had to do an abrupt stop there because I appear to be on some country estate. Oh, there's tea rooms. I've gone the wrong way. I don't want tea rooms. I want lift off over the steer. In terms of raw numbers, the GTI Club Sport S is pretty good, even by today's standards. 0 to 62 miles an hour takes 5.8 seconds, which is about the same as the current Civic Type R. And it will go on to 164 miles an hour, which isn't electronically limited. And that's fast. That is fast for a Golf. You don't have any of the old school, you know, oh, it's only 310 horsepower for 10 seconds while you're on overboost. It's just full fat 310 horsepower the entire time, which is good. It feels meaty. Don't think there's any artificial sound either. <laughs> I would love to take this on a track day. The body control is impressive without being uncomfortable. It's definitely on the firmer side of things in race mode, but this is a very bumpy farm track basically, and it's well controlled and you can turn it on the brakes and get a bit of angle going. What an exciting thing. Well done Volkswagen four years ago. Can you do this again with the Mark 8 GTI? That would be machos fanos as they say in certain countries. Now, in terms of a conclusion, I think it's a hallmark of the GTI Club Sport S that it costs you as much to buy one now in 2020 as it did in 2016. And that isn't just because they only made 400 of them. It's because it's unbelievably entertaining to drive. And it marks a moment in Volkswagen's history where the Oberleutnants of Sensible lit their long blonde hair down and said, you know what? Let's make a two-door, two-seat, track car and they did it with all their might and they did it really really well it's so entertaining to drive the downsides are negligible you know what you're buying so you know you're not going to have rear seats so that's not even really a downside either it looks cool but understated and those in the know will know what you've got so yeah one of the most entertaining hot hatch driving experiences of the past decade i would say and you need to try one or buy one use it Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. If you've liked it, hit like, hit subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified when I put another video out there on the internet. See you next time. I'm going to get out of Milton Keynes. Can't wait. Sorry if you live in Milton Keynes, but I worked here for two years and it's just pretty depressing. <laughs>